Hello folks, it's a cloudy October night. Uh, we came all the way from Lindbrook, uh, from the city, uh, on a two hour drive to uh, the Custer Institute where I'm standing right now. In front of a huge uh, 10 inch refractor in the telescope. Uh, I'm here with my mom, my dad, and my little brother. Uh, so this telescope is housed in this huge dome and on cloudless nights you actually will see this part of the observatory open up and the telescope will point uh, wherever you want to see the, the planets or the, or the stars. So uh, I'm very excited. So this is the telescope. I'm not sure whether Galileo or Newton who invented it, but this goes all the way back to Galileo, I guess. Yeah. Hi everyone, I'm at the Castro Institute at Long Island, New York. I'm here with Barbara, uh, who has been a treasurer here at the Castro Institute for 41 years. Um, without pay, she has been volunteering here simply because uh, of her love for astronomy. Uh, a love that I also happen to share, which is why I'm here in this chair and I want to know what, what, uh, what drives her to astronomy. I studied all of the classes that he taught at Suffolk Community College. And, and I kept coming here, and I became a member of Custer here. And uh, at some point, they elected me treasurer, and I've been here for 41 years. So astronomy has been a big thing in my life ever since I walked in the door here and learned everything I wanted to know about the universe. This uh, George Lamaga, this professor, is one of the best teachers I ever had. He would take us out on field trips. He would show us meteor showers. You know, we'd go out and we'd watch the meteor thing. He'd, he'd uh, teach us how to photograph the moon through the telescope. So I learned a lot of astronomy that way and just volunteering on the job here as the treasurer, I couldn't ever get enough astronomy. So even though I'm not a professor, <laughs> I do have a degree in education, but I've taken every single course that he taught. And when I didn't have any more, I asked him to think up another topic, but you know, he, he's still a member and he comes here sometimes, Professor Lamaga. So he's not here all the time, but he, he, he comes and he's still a member of Custer. The membership, the people who join Custer and pay their dues every year, that's part of the money that helps us keep the roof over our head here. You know, because we have to pay light bills and phone bills and blah, blah, blah. So we get uh, donations from people. We get uh, grants sometimes for special projects. And then just the Saturday night people who come in and drop money, you know, whatever they, we don't charge like an admission. It's like when you come in, you have to pay something. It's, it's voluntary. We didn't ever pressure anybody, but we appreciate a donation because that pays our bills. The, the story you shared, uh, you went out to your backyard and you saw all the stars. Uh, well, when I, I, I come from the, from the Bronx, I lived 12 years in the Bronx. Uh, so that's in the city. So uh, my, my dad, he brought a Celestron Astromaster telescope for me. Uh, so I had that uh, until I was 12 years old. So I got to see the moon, not much else, but I got to see the moon. Uh, because you cannot see that much else in the city. Uh, I know. Uh, yeah. I know that from yeah. in, in Brooklyn. Yeah, but then we, just six months ago, uh, after 12 years in the Bronx, we moved to Long Island. We moved to Lindbrook, uh, like I said. So uh, then in Lindbrook, uh, the sky opens up a little bit more because you are not in the city anymore. Uh, and on September 20, I still remember, I saw Venus. Wow. Uh, and how do I know I saw Venus? I, I told my mom, I told my dad I was going a little bit crazy that day because it was the first time in my life I saw another planet. Uh, so I have, I have an app on my phone that looks at the sky and it tells me what planet. Yeah, yeah. like a virtual reality tracker. So, and I, I checked what 
how many hours after the sunset is Venus is still visible and it was uh, I was in the right time so that's how I thought I saw Venus then yeah. you know there are times when you can see Venus in the data in the daytime you there, there was something going on just recently uh -huh. in uh, saying at a certain time, if the skies were clear enough, mm -hmm. you could see Venus in the day, during the day, I forget what hour, and I, I didn't do it myself, but a couple of the people uh, who were members here uh, actually did see it in the daytime and, and, and took pictures on their phones. Before sunrise? After, after, sunrise, after sunrise, in the day, daylight. That's just weird. I saw it once, <laughs> In Africa, I was in, in Kenya, in Africa, and we were able to catch a sighting of Venus during the day. It was bright enough to see it, it, it in is daytime. The, brightest planet. It, it is the planet the so, Venus, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's rare. But I, I did see it once, not, not this time, but it was visible a few days ago in the daytime if you got uh, lucky enough to be out and look for it. But it was up there. I think they even had a picture somewhere of it. I saw it on somebody's phone here. Yeah. A picture. Yeah, you said you went, you saw it in Kenya, right? In Kenya, I went there for a total in between Earth and the sun, passes right in front of the sun and covers it exactly right so that you can look with with no uh, protection on your eyes and, the corona? and you see the corona. So you could see, we, it doesn't hurt your eyes. Well, we, we had the, the uh, glasses, the special glasses uh -huh. for the partial phases when the moon is just starting to cover it. it. The sun is still too bright, so you have to protect your eyes. Once it's covered completely, and, uh, is it like nighttime during the day? It's that this happens during the day. <laughs> but yeah, in, cer in certain places, in certain places at certain times, there's going to be a fantastic solar eclipse here in the United States. It's going to cross uh, the United States and come across to the east, and it'll be visible in New York a total eclipse you, and you'll see lots of, uh, of promotion of that and uh, a lot of our people are probably going to go to a specific place um, I don't know how well we'll see it on Long Island but I know in upstate New York they're going to be able to see the total covering of the Sun next year hmm? next year 2024 Oh, I think okay. is is the year. Okay. So a few years from now, just a few yeah. years. There was there was happen. one in 2017, but it was partial. We saw it right here at Custer. Well, when you're in South Africa, you're going to be seeing. Johannesburg. Johannesburg. Yeah, you're going to be seeing the skies differently than we see them here. In North America, we're north of the equator, uh -huh. the Earth's equator. It's almost like the sky is turned upside down from what it is here. When I was in Kenya, the constellations that I knew looked weird. I was like, why is that constellation upside down? Because <laughs> we went a little bit south of the equator to see the eclipse. We, we were just south of the equator in Kenya in a, a place called Voi, V-O-I. And then we saw, um, we actually were, I actually was standing on the line, on the place where the sign said equator. The Earth's, you know, the central part of the Earth that's called the equator. And, and the sign was there and it said, you are at the equator. And I was with my friend Arlene and, I, and we were taking a picture. It was, we're at the equator. I can't believe it. And I looked down and I said, I don't think this is the equator. She said, why not? I said, there's no line there. <laughs> it was a joke.
You know, because on the globe, when you see yeah, your globe, yeah. there's a line all around the earth. And, and I said, there's no line on the ground. <laughs> but there was a sign there. It said, you are at the equator. But you'll see the stars in a different, uh, they'll be different than what, the way we see them. And some, a lot of the stars you see south of the equator, you can't see up here because we're so far north of the equator. And it's, a, it's just interesting to me to study astronomy because so many people don't even know where the sun rises. You do a lot of things based on where north is. And you, you look for the pole star. Polaris. Polaris. You got, you got that right. And Polaris is in the north. And you look for it by the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper. Polaris is the...